Today we're going to take a look at how to launch a test on the FSA platform. This year our teachers are going to be using the iPads to launch the test and monitor the tests. So we'll be going through what it looks like on the iPad and also we'll be going through login procedures for the students as well and what that will look like on their laptops so that you have an idea of what they're seeing as you're going through the scripts to launch them into the test this year. Once you've unlocked your iPad, you're going to want to start up Safari here. And when you start up Safari, it should take you to the FSA portal. To launch a test, we need to go to the test administration icon, which is right here. So we're going to tap that. And this is going to give us a bunch of different options. During the main testing window, you'll use administer the FSA, and that will launch you into the secure test during the actual testing window. For our infrastructure trial or any of our EPATs, we're going to go into TA training site to launch the practice tests. All right, once we're there, we're going to click on TA training site once more. And that is going to take us to the main login window. Now, for this, you're going to need your email address, which is your Pasco County email address. The whole thing with the at pasco.k12.fl.us at the end. And then your password you set yourself when you set up your FSA account. If you do not remember it, you'll need to go to this forgot your password uh, button right above the secure login button. Once you have your user information entered into the fields, we're going to hit the secure login button. If you get a message asking for opening of pop-ups, you want to hit allow. All right, and now we are into the test launch page. Now, the test launch looks a little different than it did last year. We have the option to select any test that we want, and we've got these drop-down menus this year. So as we get ready, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the plus sign and it's going to drop down the menu. So we can launch any one of these tests and to get to what test you want sometimes you need to go through a couple different drop downs. Say if we wanted to launch the grade 8 mathematics practice test. We click on mathematics then we go down grade 6 through 8 and then we'd select the grade 8 mathematics practice test. It's kind of hard to see because the checkbox goes, instead of going black with the check mark, it goes white. So once you've got that and we've selected the test we want to launch, you'll hit start practice session. Once you hit that, up here in your display, you're going to see a session ID. For any of our practice tests, it's going to start with train, T-R-A-I-N. When we're in the main testing window, they'll all start with FL. This is their test group session code. They need this code to launch into the test. So you cannot have the students log into the a environment and launch a test without you starting up the test first. So let's take a look at that. This is what our student laptops look like when they launch into our a testing environment. To get to this, on the login screen, you just type in A plus, A-P-L-U-S for a username and A plus for the password. Once you get in here, we're going to need to launch the FSA Secure Browser. So in our dock here, it's the center one that says FSA Secure Browser. So we're going to click on that and launch the Secure Browser. All right, when we're in the main testing window, this is the screen that our students are going to log in. They're going to get their information from their test tickets. They'll need their first name, a username, which is on the test ticket, and the session ID that you just created in the teacher administration side of FSA. But for an EPAT or an infrastructure trial, we're going to use go to the practice test. You'll notice the difference. Across the top you have the red bar that says student practice test. Now, when we're launching the infrastructure trial or the or a practice test, what we're going to do is we're going to leave this guest user checked up top, but we need to uncheck guest session here. This way we can enter in our session ID that was in the other screen. Okay, for our eighth grade math test that we have launched a practice session for, our session ID was train, and then we'll need to tab over to the next window, E5FC, 
and then tab over one more time and we've got two there. So once we have those three boxes entered, we can hit sign in. And this is very similar to what the kids are going to see on the FSA. Just when they get to the FSA, it will have their actual first name, it will have their username from their text ticket, it will have their last name. When they're in the test itself, this will be selected for them and it will show the appropriate grade. Since we're taking an 8th grade mathematics practice test, we'll choose 8 for right now. And then date of birth and school should be set there. And the script will ask them to verify all this information. After that, we click yes, and we're going to see the practice test that we launched. So our next step is the kids are going to click the green arrow here. And it's going to say waiting for TA approval. So now, as a test administrator, we're now going to allow the kids to have access to this test. So let's take a look at what's happening on the teacher's side in the FSA platform. At this point, we need to approve students into the test session. So you'll notice that right next to where you have your session ID, a new button is lit up, says approvals. And you have in this red circle how many students are awaiting approval. Don't be freaked out by the flash that you just saw on the screen. Every minute, the system itself refreshes the information. So when you see that flicker, it's just the system resetting itself and just getting new information from the FSA portal. So for right now, let's click approval so we can get this student into our test. There are two ways to approve students. You have the green check mark here or when we are in the FSA and we have a list of students, we can approve all students at one time. During the regular test session, make sure that you check the student name, student ID, and everything. Make sure that these are the students that are supposed to be in your test session. For right now, during an infrastructure trial or a practice test, it's just going to show up guest. So during our main test, we're going to see a list. We're going to verify that these are the students that are assigned to us. And then once that happens, you can approve all students. And it's going to give you an information here. It's going to say confirm that you are allowing a student into the particular test. So you'll see one more time the test that you're allowing them into. So it's a good chance to, for us to just double check one more time we're launching the right test. Once you have that, you click yes at the bottom. And that student is now into the final things before they get into the test session. So let's take a look at those final steps on the student side because once you've launched them into the session and released them, it's all up to the kids at this point. Once you've approved students into a session, this is the next screen they see. Once again, it's going to ask them, is this your test? The session ID will be displayed right there for them and right here you're going to see the name of the test. This is where they can change the size of the print and the color of the background if they choose. After they've made those selections, they're going to click yes, start my test. And then you're, the student is going to be, be able to see an overview of the tools used in the test. After they've reviewed that, all they need to do is click the blue begin test now button. And after that, you see the first item in the practice test show up. Their navigation buttons are here. They have drop downs of question types and sections. They have their pause button up here and everything else. So we're going to, for the sake of argument, say they've gone through the whole test. Let's see how we shut down the test session now. All right, back on our test administration screen, we're going to go through the steps of how to shut down a test, which is pretty simple. The nice thing about the test is as the students are testing, you're going to see their student status. You're going to see how many, if they've started the test, how many questions they've answered up to this point. You have your pause button here, which you can pause their test at any time. They can also do it from their station. But well, let's pretend we're at the end. We've read our stop script, and we need to shut down this test session. Right next to our session ID, you're going to see the big red stop button. We're just going to click that. It's going to give you a warning, say, about if you shut down the session, that the students will no longer be admitted access under that session code. So just make sure everybody's out. Once that happens, you can click OK. And that closes our test session. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video today or any other questions about how to administer the test, please stop on down by the Media see Dave 
or Becca and we'll be more than happy to help you out.